Welcome to FreshMind.com. My name is Eric, and I'm going to show you how to combine and smooth two polygon cylinders of equal size. Now, what I mean by equal size is equal diameter or equal radius. It doesn't really matter how long they are, but they should be the same amount of subdivisions because it will make it much more easier when you combine these two together. The edges will all line up, and you won't have to do any merging of vertices. I'm assuming that you already know the basics of how to select and move vertices and faces and edges and such. If you don't, feel free to visit www.freshmaya.com. We have a tools and features section with videos that will teach you how to snap to vertices and edges and how to select edge loops and such. Uh, we also have a Zero to Hero series that focuses on the basics of Maya, so feel free to check those out. In this tutorial here, I'm going to focus mainly on the process of combining and smoothing these rather than on all the small details. I'm going to start off by lining the right edge of this highlighted cylinder to the center edge of this highlighted cylinder. So I'm just going to go to vertices select mode. I'm going to select all these vertices. I'm going to snap those to the center of our vertical cylinder. I'm going to select both cylinders, go up to mesh, booleans, and union. Now because we had these lined up precisely, if we go in here and select the vertice and move it, you'll see that they are all welded quite nicely. So it just makes it much easier. Next thing we need to do is to bring this edge loop. Go ahead and bring it all the way around to the other side so it lines up. I'm going to do that by using the split polygon tool. And I'll go back and select these vertices that are high and just lower those down to where they need to be. All right. At this point, we're pretty much done. The only decision left to make is what kind of transition do we want on all these edges? Do we want sharp edges or do we want rounded edges? If you're familiar with smoothing, you'll know that three edges close together will produce a sharp edge and three edges far apart will create a rounded edge or you could actually even have two edges uh, that will create a rounded edge alright so let's start with the top bottom and left edge I'm gonna go ahead and let's see there's two ways there's actually a couple ways we could do it one way is just to go in here and use our insert edge loop tool just insert a couple of edges like that so now if I go to object mode and hit 3 for preview smooth preview you'll see we have a sharp edge there now. Another way we can add those edges, and most of the time it's usually an easier way, is we can just select that bottom edge loop. We can select this edge loop whoop, over there. We can do a bevel. So now we just put a bevel on this left side and on the bottom. Then we can go over here to the channel box, and you'll see poly bevel 1 under the input nodes. If I click that, it's going to expand, and you should see segments in the list. Right now it's on one. If I change that to two segments, then that's going to create the three edges that we need. And then to adjust how close or how far we want those edges, all we need to do is back up here in the channel box is change the offset value. So a smaller offset value will bring those edges closer together, and a bigger offset value will make those edges further apart. So let's go ahead and make these. Right now it's 0.5. I'm going to change mine to 0.05. So if I zoom in here, you can see we've got three edges going around the bottom of our cylinder that are real close together. And if we do a smooth preview, it creates a sharp edge just like the uh, top. And another reason why a lot of times it's better to use a bevel rather than just adding edge loops is because we can go back in here, go back to our channel box, input nodes under the poly bevel 1. I can click on the word offset, and now I can just middle mouse drag left and right on my screen and I can see a real-time update on the effect of how close or how far apart those three edges are oh, kinda so you can see right there okay the only thing we got left to do is the where the two cylinders were connected right now we have a real big transition which kinda makes it look a little odd unless that's the kinda look you're going for but for this tutorial, let's make it a rounded edge, but not so rounded. All right, if we zoom in here, you'll see we already have one edge loop. So right there. 
So let's add two more edges. I'm going to use the insert edge loop tool. Let's see, I'll put one, say, right there, and another one right there. Try to keep them evenly spaced out. That usually gives you much better results. If I do a smooth preview, you'll see we have a round transition, but the problem that it created is that it's pulling outward. If you look at the top and then start going down the contour, it's pulling outward. That's really not the look we want. To fix that, we're just going to add a edge loop above and below. So I'm going to shift, right click, but I'm going to use a cut faces tool because I want this edge loop to be straight across. I don't want it to come down and then over, if that makes sense. So I'm going to make a cut. And I want it, like these are spaced out. Well, I want to keep it kind of the same, even going up. So I'll put my cut about right here. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom. Doesn't have to be exact, but as long as it's close, then you'll get some nice results. All right, so let's do a smooth preview. And let's go in here, and you can see it stays straight all the way down until we get to where it transitions. And that's it. It's pretty much that simple. So if we wanted a really sharp transition, then we'll just go in here and pull our edges closer together because we said that three edges close together will produce a much sharper transition. So there's three. Now because I've pulled those three together, I'm going to select this edge loop up here. And I'm pulling it down until this edge, this edge, and this edge are all roughly the same. So let's do the same thing to the bottom. And now let's do a smooth preview. And we have a nice sharp edge right there going around. But it's a really still looks like a great transition. And that's it. Um, as far as application, this is useful for, let's say you're wanting to make a handrail to go up some stairs. Well, this would be a method that you could do that. Also, uh, another thing that comes to mind is a bicycle. If you're modeling a, bi a bicycle, then let's say the handlebars are up here at the top. Then you know that it comes down, and then there's usually a bar that goes across. Or for a lot of women's bi uh, bikes, the bar kind of goes downward. And usually you've got one or two, and you've also got a... Uh, a transition over here where you would have a seat. But that's pretty much it. Combine them, add your edge loops close together if you want a sharp transition, further apart if you want a more rounded transition, and then just don't forget to add some edge loops on the uh, vertical section as well. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.